vice chair, and uh, Carolyn Steele is our lay leader. So if you need something, those are um, some people. Um, lay Carolyn's really a good connection between the congregation and the board, so um, feel free to go to Carolyn if you have something. You can always, of course, come to me. And then uh, members on the board, we have Kathy Kinch, who's our treasurer. We have um, Ashley Hansen. We have uh, Becky Lindstrom, we have Jeff Stoffer, and we have Alan Thomas. I think that's everyone. Does that sound like everyone? Board members are shaking their heads, so I think so. So those are the members of our board. Um, so if you need anything, please um, contact us, or if you have um, ideas, um, those kind of things, please come to us. We want to hear from you all. Also a reminder that at the beginning of each of our board meetings, we have a time for members of the congregations to come and share any ideas, thoughts, um, questions, concerns that they have. So um, keep that in mind if you have anything. So as we get started, we just want to update you on what happened this last meeting. And so Ashley's going to come up and give us a review of our board meeting for the week. Hi, uh, just like you said, I'm Ashley Hansen, and I'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown of some of the most important things we talked about at our meeting this week. Um, first off, we officially, yeah, here they go. We officially appointed Kimberlyn Yule as chair of trustees and Mike Mitchell as our vice chair. Uh, we also talked about the Silver Lake 4-H um, group here in town wants to use our church to meet next month or their next meeting, and we said that would be great, and we were talking about if they wanted to continue doing that going forward, we'd probably be open to that. Um, we discussed how we could help those in our community when they need more than just the food bank. We all know that things are getting a little bit harder and everything's getting spread a little thinner. And we decided that what we could do to most efficiently help people would be actually to refer them to places like Let's Help and Topeka North Outreach who are designed to help with people when they need to oh, make utilities or maybe get gas or something. So. If you know someone in our community who is needing help making ends meet, if you would recommend Let's Help and Topeka North Outreach, there's a very good chance that they are ready and able to help that person specifically with those needs. Um, the food bank also received a check from Wieners. If you've ever noticed that Wieners uh, takes donations for the food bank in both cash and actual canned goods, uh, we got a check from them this month, which is nice. The preschool is planning on continuing through uh, to next year, and we said that would be a great idea. Um, and this year we were, our income as a church was above our expenditures, which was excellent. But what was most exciting is we were able to pay 100% of our mission shares for 2022, which is awesome and hasn't happened in a while. And then the last thing, uh, we talked about the fact that there's some suitcases in the basement that were left over from the garage sale, and a good way to use them is to put them, or give them to the foster care system in the area, because whenever a kid is taken from their home and has to go somewhere else, a lot of times they're left with just a trash bag to put their belongings in, which is just an added mess to a fairly traumatic situation. So if you know of any suitcases that are just laying around your house that you might want to get rid of, I believe the library is actually collecting suitcases to take to um, the foster care system. We have some in the basement. I believe we were just going to check and make sure they weren't for something else after the garage sale, but our intention is also to give those to the foster care system. So that's pretty much it. We scheduled a meeting tentatively for next month, but yeah, it was a great meeting. Thank you. And I did get confirmation that we can use those suitcases for that. Cool. So. so wonderful. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley's um, one of our new members on the board, so it, it's great to um, hear from her this morning. That brings us to a time of other announcements. So I have a few I want to bring up, and then um, I'll open the floor. One of which, so we mentioned um, that we're referring um, some of uh, utility assistance and stuff to other organizations. But one of the things we were going to um, collect funds for is like gas vouchers um, or 
just a few grocery vouchers, but mostly for gas. So if you are interested, um, you can donate like a 25-ish dollar gift card to the church to one of our gas stations in town. So either Wieners for like Rossville area or Casey's or um, Philip 66, which is Faraz's. We can take those and then that way, I've had several people come in since I've been here just looking to get a little bit of gas to get them to their next location. So this would be a way for us to be able to support them um, in a way that that is um, significant in their life. So please consider donating some gift cards to the church um, or if you would I'm just like to donate money to that. Just put that and we'll buy gift cards. Just when you make the donation, make sure that you write that it's for gas vouchers and we'll make sure to get those um, converted into gift cards for our program. Um, one of the things I did just see this week on the news, if you've been watching, so we just signed up for Amazon Smile and they're shutting down the program at the end of the month. So um, if you, we can still use it through the end of the month. So use it through the end of, um, February, I think it's, or end of February, not the end of this month, end of next month. Um, so get all the purchases you can in then to help support us. Um, but after that, Amazon Smiles uh, will be shutting down. That was a bummer to see this week. Those are the um, announcements I have. And so do you all have other announcements this morning? Um, I have several. We will start bell practice for Easter next Sunday after church. So if you want to play, come on up. And also bingo is February 11th, and we're getting quite a few donations in, and I thank everyone that's done that. Um, come out and play bingo. Thank you. The youth group soup fundraiser will be on February 5th after church. It will consist of chili, beef stew, pizza, taco, potato soup, and more. So please come and support the youth group. Thanks. All right. If there are no other announcements, um, I don't know of any birthdays this week. Um, so if there are any birthdays or anniversaries you all have, all right, then, um, oh, one more announcement. So you may have noticed when you came in, you only got an insert this week. Um, we made a mistake and printed January 8th on the inside and this week's on the outside, so there was really nothing in it for you. So uh, just follow up. We had the same, the same order as always, um, but all of the liturgy and information will be up on the screen today, so I apologize um, for that. I now invite you to rise as you are able to embody your spirit and join in our call to worship, which will be projected. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Why should we be afraid? The Lord is the stronghold of our life. What have we to fear? Let us shout with joy to God. Let us sing and make music before our God. Let us now remain standing as you are able and join in our opening hymn, O, God, or, o Church of God United, number 544 in the hymnal, verses 1, 3, and 4.
You may be seated and we'll have our unison prayer. Um, but before that, I did have one more announcement. Um, this morning I forgot to say, we are, um, I'm looking for more people to be um, liturgists, so doing some of the readings in the morning. So if you're interested, please let me know. Um, what my plan is, is to send out an email now to everyone who's, who's done it and just see who's still interested and start to do it that way to, to get things situated instead of just having a sinus on the back to hopefully have us be a little more regular and see some more um, different faces. But if you're interested, it's pretty easy. Ask Jenny. She was super nervous, and now she's um, all excited to help out. I don't know if excited is the right word, but that's what I'm going to say. Um, but uh, it's doing the unison prayer and reading some scripture um, each week. So if you're interested, please let me know, and I'll add you onto that email list. Please join me in the unison prayer. Heavenly Father, you have called us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, to continue his work of reconciliation and reveal you to the world. Forgive us the sins which tear us apart. Give us the courage to overcome our fears and to seek that unity which is your gift and your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We come now to a time of joys and concerns that we get to share with one another. Do we have any to raise this morning? Uh, my cousin Randall Mai, he was hit by a car in Manhattan just the other day, and he is in critical condition at Stormont Vale with head injuries and multiple broken bones. Mm, prayers for Randall. The flowers on the altar this morning is from Wayne Counter and his family, and we'd like to continue to have Barb in our prayers. Yes. Are there other prayer requests this morning? My brother-in-law, uh, Don Jordan, is at home now. Uh, hospice does come out every day, though, and he's not doing real good. Prayers for Don Jordan in, in this this time. Are there others? If not, I invite you to join me in a, in a time of prayer. Holy and gracious Lord, we come before you today as your people coming to seek your guidance, your wisdom, your comfort, your peace, your love, your grace. We sit here before you, bringing up to you the many gifts that we share. We bring before you today the many concerns and joys that are on our hearts. Lord, we've lifted up several to you this morning, and we continue to lift those up, but we also take a moment now to lift up those prayers that are on our hearts, the ones that, that, we, that we didn't share out loud, but that we can lift up together with our community. What a joy it is, Lord, to know that you are always listening, always here with us, keeping us in your, in your presence, in your embrace. We are reminded today of the ways that our, we are connected with one another, with those here in this community, with those around the world who call you Lord and Savior. That together we have a great task to bring about your love in a way that, that is unknown to this world. To bring about your kingdom here on earth. One that surpasses all of our understanding. One that is full of love and grace. Help us this week, Lord, to experience your love and grace so that we may share that with others. To show them the great joy that you have placed in our lives to show them the great power that you have shown us to forgive sin and to pursue love. Lord, we just ask that, that, you, that you bless us this week, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit and allow us to be beacons of your light in this world. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to remain seated and join in our um, next hymn, The Church is One Foundation, number 454, 545 in the hymnal, verses 1, 4, and 5. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians in the first chapter, verses 10 through 18. Please rise in body or spirit for the reading of the scripture. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be knit together in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been made clear to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you. My brothers and sisters, what I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas. Cephas? Cephas. Cephas. That sounded right. I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not the eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might be emptied of its power. For the message above the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's word. Amen. You may be seated. I want to also invite now our children to head off to Sunday school. (laughs) 
One of the things when we think about our identity is we think about our identity in association with different groups that we have. Maybe it's what college we graduated from, what place we work for or have worked for, what is the highest educational degree that we hold, what sports we follow, and maybe sometimes even more importantly, what sports teams we follow. I get this a lot from being a Nebraska native. If I'm from Nebraska, then I must be a Nebraska Husker fan. As a Husker football fan, um, I must watch every game, follow the coaching and staffing changes, know each of the players. And when I meet new people and I tell them that I'm from Nebraska, it's not uncommon to hear some remarks to the Huskers and what they are currently up to or not up to with their, co with their football program. But if you get a moment to even talk with me just a little bit about Husker football, you will learn that I know little to nothing. I know the basic rules of football, but I couldn't tell you any current players on the Huskers. <clears throat> I couldn't tell you if they won or if they lost, and I could make an assumption that they lost. I couldn't even tell you who the coach is going to be this next season. But so many from Nebraska people are Husker fans. People just assume that it's a part of my DNA as well. While I don't really follow sports, I know a lot of people do. And from what I hear, um, there was a pretty big game this week for Kansas, City, or for Kansas. I'm sure it could be a bit divisive, but it's the KU versus K-State basketball game. When I moved to Kansas in 2019, I knew nothing about the rivalry between KU and K-State, but it did not take me long to hear the KU and K-State banter from the members of the church that I was in. Was it go Wild Hawks or go Jayhawks? They, they were, at, in this time, making fun of each other. <laughs> See, here we go. Um, with either, you know, talking about, oh, well, our basketball team or our football team, each of them showing where their alliance was lying. The game this last week led to an unexpected outcome where K-State beat KU. Now, I'm sure many of you are thrilled about this, some bringing the bragging rights until they have the next time to play, but also there are going to be many of you who are also disappointed and holding on to the basketball program that has been known for so many years. This idea of finding a belonging with a particular group has been the basis of humanity forever. And as Paul talks about today, we see that um, sometimes the groups we identify ourselves with can get in the way of what really matters. And the church is just like anything else. We have lots of groups. There are Methodists. There are Baptists, there are uh, tablets that just jump all over the place, there are Catholics, there are non-denominational, there are more progressive denominations and more traditionalists. Sometimes this can cause problems, and that is what Paul is addressing here in the church in Corinth. Paul had brought the news of Jesus to Corinth, the city of Corinth, around 50 CE. So Corinth is the city that the letter of the Corinthians was written to and founded the church there. Corinth was a fairly major city in the first century. It was an intersection for business people, trade people, manufacture, tourism, and any who hoped to rise quickly in financial or social status. Because of its location being, being near a port, this city was a very large mix of different people living in the city. There were Jews and Greeks and Romans were all normal inhabitants of the city of Corinth. Prior to, to Paul's visit to Corinth, they worshipped mostly the Greek gods. So Paul, seeking to establish a new church, was going against these other teachings that had been in the area for years and years. Paul was there in Corinth for about a year preaching and teaching and building this church. And it was much easier for the church to focus on the teachings of Jesus while Paul was there. And so while Paul was there, Paul was able to serve as a focal point, alleviating tensions that arose as he could quickly share his wisdom to others. This is similar to how we act when we're around authority figures. We put our best foot forward. We listen to what they say. We follow their rules. But once they are gone, it's much easier to turn and do our own thing, to not follow the rules that we have set, that have been set before us. 
This is where Corinth found themselves in what Paul's writing in this letter is referring to. Throughout this letter, we see references to some other letters, some other correspondences that have happened between Paul and the Corinthians before. There's notes to, in my previous letter, and so we know that there's been contact since Paul has left with Corinth. And one of the things he's been hearing is that there's divisions beginning among the members. And so Paul is responding to this correspondence to tell them what is the right way for this church to move forward. What we see today is that this church was divided, and Paul says, beginning in chapter 12, people are saying that I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cepheus, or I belong to Christ. And he responds as if many of us would if we were in a conversation after conversation about the same thing with the same people, and they just still don't get it. He responds with a little bit of sass. Paul can be a sassy guy when you read his letters. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Cyphus and Gaius, and that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. So Paul, seeing that the focus of the church began to become not on who was Jesus, but on who was the right teacher and who was wrong. Who was following Paul, the one who founded this church? Who was following Apollos, who we don't know a lot about, but someone who was, who was teaching something at the time? I belong to Cephas. Cephas is Peter the Apostle. So Cephas is, translates to rock, so the rock, which is Peter. Or I belong to Christ, where Paul is trying to push people to get to. Paul's focus is for the church to focus on Jesus' name, not on the, what teacher is right or wrong. Paul may have founded this church, and he, but it is not his church. We don't pray to Paul or to Peter, but we pray to God, God who the church is built around, not any single person. We too fall into these tendencies at times. We don't look at what something means, but we look at who is leading it. We don't look at what's God's mission, but what is this person's mission? We follow a person over an ideology because we have associated this person with that belief. It happens both in the church and outside the church. Preachers are not the head of the church. Jesus is. Bishops are not the head of the church. Jesus is. Celebrities, politicians, friends, families, ourselves, none of us defined the church. It's only God. One of the questions we must ask ourselves is who do I belong to? Do I belong to myself? Do I belong to my work? Do I belong to Silver Lake? Do I belong to the institutional church? Do I belong to a political party? What what Peter is, or Paul is saying here isn't so much about that we can't associate with other groups, but where is the influence of our thoughts and beliefs coming from? Where do we turn to when we want to figure out the next steps in life? I ask you to think about this. What is the most in influential person, thing, or ideology in your life? What guides your actions, your thoughts, and your choices? The goal here is to be able to answer with this that I belong to God or Christ or Lord or Jesus, however you relate to our God. But that's not necessarily what it looks like in our lives. And one of the things, the first steps in getting through this is by recognizing that God may not be who we first associate with belonging to. And that's okay. That's one of the great things about our God. Our God is a gracious God who gives us forgiveness and is calling us to continue our lives, to move closer to this goal. But what does it look like when we are able to say, I belong to God? How does our life look and what looks different when we belong and can say that we belong to God? 
One of the things it shows is that we don't completely conform with the society around us. But we can still live normal lives. We just emphasize different things. First and foremost, God has called us to emphasize love. Not like the romantic love that we often think of, but a genuine recognition of worth and care for everyone that we meet and in this world. To love God in a way that we have no other choice but to love others. To remember the commandments that Jesus told us were the greatest of these. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. All of the other commandments are summed up in these two. This condition of love then calls us not only to this feeling of connection with others, but to action in the world, to seek justice for the oppressed, to seek equality for all of God's children, to seek clean food and water for all, to serve without the need of recognition, but truly out of love for each other. To change our focus. Our focus is not to be on earthly things, but on God's kingdom. A kingdom that has room for everyone, that calls us to care for one another, to share our lives with the world. To not be selfish, but focus, put others first, all while we are taking care of ourselves. To always seek to learn more about who God is and how God is working in this world. And we do that in so many different ways. Some of those ways are coming to church, attending small groups, reading the Bible, Spending time in prayer, in prayer, talking with friends and family, because it is together that we experience God in more creative and dynamic ways. The thing with which we belong to is God, and when we do that, every part of our life is changed. Our life doesn't just change on Sunday mornings. We are changed Monday through Sunday, 24-7, 365 days a year, even 366 days on leap years. Paul's message is to focus on what God is doing. We are humans and we sin, and we will always have something wrong until the end comes when Christ returns. But we can do our best part now to put God in the center of our lives. For God to guide our actions, to teach us how to love. And we can do this without giving up on life as we know it. We can do this by beginning to find a new way to live our lives. To be in the, be in the world, but not of the world. To make God the guiding factor of all that we do. So that one day... And maybe now we can say, I belong to God. And we take a step forward in life of love and a life of the kingdom. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Lord, we come before you today seeking your forgiveness for the times when we have not belonged to you first. When we have said, I belong to, insert what we would say. Lord, we know that this life that we live is a journey. It's a journey of leading us to the point where we are able to say, I belong to you, God. As we come here today, we just repent of the times when we have fallen short, when we have focused on selfish ways and ways of this world and not on your ways. Lord, we ask that you fill us with your love so that we may experience it in such ways that it has no other option than to outflow from us to others in this world which you have created. Guide us along this path, allowing us to receive your, your grace, your love, and say from the top of our lungs at the top of the mountain, I belong to God. Help us, Lord, to experience this great power that your kingdom brings in our life and in this world. It is in your holy and gracious name that we pray. Amen. That brings us now to our time of the offering where we have this, this time to bring forth our gifts to spread the love that Christ has put before us. Part of belonging to God is giving back to those in this community and those around the world who God has called us to be in relationship with.
So I invite you to think of the ways that your giving today allows us to be that love in this world where sometimes love is forgotten or not seen. I'd invite our ushers to come forward and receive our tithes and offerings. Holy and gracious Lord, we lift up to you today these gifts for your blessing, for you to bless them, to do your will, to allow us to be your hands and feet here in this earth, to share your love with all that we meet. Multiply these gifts to do your great work here in this community and around the world. It is in your holy and loving name that we pray. Amen. I invite you now to remain standing as you are able and join in our closing be. Blessed be the tide that binds, number 557 in the hymnal, verses 1 through 4. As we go forth to say, allow us to examine the places in our lives where we say we belong to and look at the ways that we can move for forward in love and grow in faith to say, I belong to Christ. The service is ended. You may go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.